Abby was a college student. Every day before classes, she packed a sandwich for lunch. And her meal disappeared from her backpack every single time. After Abby was left hungry once again, she got very angry and decided to track down the thief. The next day, she left her bag in the classroom, hid in a locker, and started waiting. Abby noticed someone pull the sandwich out of the backpack, but she didn't see their face. She decided to ask everyone about the stolen sandwich. Liam said, How dare you! I only eat fruit salads! Jason said, My granny made this sandwich for me. And Chuck said that he just bought his sandwich in the school vending machine. Who's lying? Abby didn't have lettuce in her sandwich, so it must be Jason who stole it. Abby passed her first test in college and decided to throw a party. She invited all of her friends. That was also the evening when Abby found out that one of them wasn't uh -oh. human. Can you tell who? It's Henry. Both of his shoes are for the right foot. During spring break, Abby organized a garage sale to sell some of her old dresses. After a while, Abby got her first customer, Tina. The girl picked only one dress and asked Abby, How much for this dress? Abby answered, $30. Tina didn't want to spend that much, so she asked, Could you sell it for $20? Abby agreed. Tina gave her $50, but Abby didn't have any change, so she went to her neighbor to ask for help. The neighbor gave Abby three notes, two 20s and one $10 note. Abby came back, gave $30 to Tina, and put the remaining $20 in her wallet. A few minutes later, the neighbor ran into Abby's garage and shouted, That note you gave me is fake! Give me my money back! Abby had to give the man her own money. How much money did she lose? Well, firstly, Abby gave away the dress for free, and its full price was $30 before the discount. Then she had to pay $30 out of her own pocket to her neighbor. So, Abby lost a total of $60. Abby invited her best friend Nina to go skating in the park. Soon, they got really hungry and decided to buy some burgers. They chose similar toppings and added lots of sauces. Ten minutes later, Nina got very sick. Abby had to call 911. Paramedics took the girl to a hospital and diagnosed severe poisoning. Can you tell which sauce was poisoned? This one. Abby didn't use any garlic sauce. When Nina got better, Abby took her for a walk. They spotted the spookiest house in the neighborhood and decided to check it. <laughs> that was a big mistake. When they got inside, the door behind them suddenly disappeared. Now they have three ways out. There's a zombie behind the first door. A creepy vampire is waiting behind the second door. And there's an angry g -g -g ghost behind the third door. Which way is the safest? They should choose the third door. Ghosts may be spooky, but they can't cause any real harm. Okay, well, maybe you might get slimed, but... Nina and Abby found themselves in the next room. The door leading outside was open, and they ran toward it. But an old witch popped out of nowhere and yelled, Hey, 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 not so fast. You've got to solve my riddle first. Why are these words in such an order? Nina and Abby failed to crack this riddle. What about you? Here's the correct answer. The words rhyme with 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That's why they're in this order. The witch teleported Nina and Abby to her basement. But the girls didn't give up and found three ways out again. The room behind the first door was filled with toxic gas. It was extremely harmful to their lungs and skin. There was a 300-pound weight above the second door. It'll crush anyone or anything that steps inside. And a hungry tiger was waiting behind the third door. 
Abby and Nina hesitated for a while and made the right choice. Which door did they choose? Nina took off her boot and threw it on the floor in the second room. The weight crushed the boot, and the girls ran into the room and closed the door. After that, they escaped through the window. Unfortunately, they got lost in a magical forest. It was cold since it was winter. After wandering around for a while, they saw three roads. All of them seemed dangerous. If they picked the road leading to the left, they'd have to go past some hungry wolves. And if they went straight ahead, they'd have to go through a village where werewolves lived. And the third path went over a lake covered with thin ice that could crack at any moment. Which way should they choose? They should follow the second path. Look at the sky. It's a new moon. And werewolves are only dangerous during a full moon. Nina and Abby got home safely. Oh, but no. someone had burgled their apartment while they were absent. They called the police, and they questioned three neighbors. Jeff said, I was away all weekend, fishing with my friends. Holly said, I didn't leave my home. I was painting the walls in my apartment all weekend. I love bright colors, you know. And Lucy said that she'd been singing karaoke with her friends and hadn't heard anything suspicious. Who's lying? Holly. The walls in her apartment are mostly white, but she said that she painted them in some bright colors. Nina got a job in a bookstore. On her first day at work, she found a vintage watch on the floor. Three people came over to claim it. Kevin said that he'd bought this watch when he got his first salary many years ago. Violet said that she'd inherited the watch from her grandfather. And Dylan said, This watch is priceless. My wife gave it to me for our fifth anniversary. Can you tell who owns this watch? It's Violet. She has the narrowest wrist. That's why the girl made an extra hole. Otherwise, the watch would slip off her hand. Abby went on a date with Jerry. He invited her over. But as soon as Abby got inside his apartment, Jerry turned into an evil wizard. He decided to make fun of her and said, I'll give you a chance to get free. Just make me breakfast tomorrow. If it's good enough, I'll let you go. And if it's bad, you'll stay here forever. <laughs> the next morning, Abby came to the kitchen and began cooking. When she turned away from the stove, Jerry added a whole box of salt to the pot. But when Abby served breakfast, Jerry understood that he'd have to let Abby go. What did she cook? She cooked boiled eggs. Abby got a new job. She had to assist a railroad supervisor. One day, they faced a huge problem. A faster train was approaching a slower one. According to the schedule, the slower train had to let the faster train go first. Abby offered to use an auxiliary railway line, but it was too short for the slower train. Abby didn't know what to do, but finally, she found the solution. What did she realize? The faster train should use the auxiliary railway line. Now the slower train can move back. When the main railway line is free, the faster train can go first. Abby got a note which said that a vampire family had moved into one of the houses in the neighborhood. Abby wanted to find evidence that vampires didn't exist. She found the street she needed. There were three houses there. Which house looks suspicious? Look at the footprints. They're pretty weird. They lead to and from houses A and C. It means people must come and leave these houses. As for house B, the footprints only lead inside. So this must be the vampire's house. Abby told Nina about her adventures, but her friend didn't believe her. So the next night, 
Nina decided to go into the house on her own. Once she walked through the door, it got locked behind her back. Nina wandered around and found three doors. They looked the same, but the symbols on them were different. Suddenly, a creepy voice announced, The only way to escape safely is to exit through the fifth door. The only way to escape safely is to exit through the fifth door. But there were only three doors. Which door should Nina choose? Take a look at the symbols. They're actually numbers turned toward each other. So Nina should choose the first door. This symbol is made up of two fives looking at each other. This must be the fifth door the girl needs. A theft happened in Abby and Nina's college. The police caught three suspects. The detective's task was to identify which suspect was a robot. There were several items on the table in front of him. A kitchen knife, a bottle of water, a screwdriver, and a marker. Abby said that she knew how to recognize the robot. What should they do? The detective should ask each of them to drink water from the bottle. The robot will either refuse or experience a short circuit. One day, Abby decided to go visit her granny. The woman lived alone in the countryside. There were only a few stores near her house. There was nowhere to go and no one to talk to. Abby was sick and tired of her city life and wanted to breathe some fresh air for a few weeks. Her boyfriend Chuck didn't mind. The next day after Abby left, he sent her a message to find out how she was doing. Abby told him that everything was fine and even sent him a selfie. Chuck looked at the picture and understood that Abby was lying. How did he know? Take a look at the car. There's a movie sign reflected in the windshield. Amy lives in a cozy townhouse with three roommates, Jill, Alice, and Nora. Can you guess which one of these four roommates belongs to Amy? See this comb with green hair in the first room? It looks just like Nora's hair color, so it's probably her room. In the second room, there's a sock under the bed. Jill's wearing the same sock on her left foot, so let's exclude the second room too. And now, let's take a look at the fourth room. There's a decoration on the wall, a large letter A. Therefore, this could be both Amy's room and Alice's room. But how can we guess who lives there? Very simple. In the third room, there's a yellow jacket hanging on the back of the chair. And Alice is wearing yellow trousers. These are two parts of one suit. Therefore, Amy lives in the fourth room. Bob entered a coffee shop. Suddenly, he realized that he'd forgotten his wallet at home, so he didn't have any money to pay for his drink. Jake, the barista, offered Bob a deal. I'm going to tell you three facts about myself. If you manage to spot one lie, your drink is free. Bob agreed. Here's the first fact. Jake has three brothers. Next, Jake hates the color red. And the third one, he has a PhD in philosophy. Can you help Bob get his free drink? The second fact is false. Jake's phone case is red, but he said that he hated that color. Will and Frank went hiking and found a beautiful spot on a deserted beach. They set up camp to settle down for the night. The next morning, the guys got out of the tent and found out that someone had stolen all food supplies and fishing equipment. Take a look at this picture. Can you guess who stole the food? There are no animal tracks on the sand, but that doesn't prove anything. Pay attention to the water level. In the evening, it was significantly lower. 
Nobody stole their food. Waves washed away their bags. Can you see this carrot in the water? Someone robbed a famous jewelry shop this night between 2 and 3 a.m. In the morning, the owner called the police. He wanted this kept quiet, so he didn't share any details with the journalists. The officers have found suspects previously accused of similar robberies and asked them just one question. What were you doing last night? Peter said, Between 2 and 3 a.m., I was playing video games with my friend. He can confirm my words. Bill replied, I watched a TV show with my family and went to bed at 11 p.m. Rick said that he had spent the whole night in a nightclub because he was a DJ. Who robbed the bank? Peter, how could he know the exact time of the robbery? These customers look pretty innocent, but one of them is a thief. Can you guess who? This lady's hiding a pizza in her bag. Take a look at these two guys. Which one of them isn't smart? The lady is acting less smart. The pilot has a co-pilot at least. Can you find anything odd here? This pen is from another century. Fiona woke up in a creepy abandoned castle. She searched the area and found some old furniture and these four doors leading to freedom. But each door is hiding dangerous creatures. An angry dragon is waiting behind the first door. The floor behind the second door is all covered with venomous snakes. There's a gorgon behind the third door. She turns to stone everyone she looks at. And there's a wicked werewolf behind the fourth door. Can you help Fiona choose the safest door? She should take the mirror and show it to the Gorgon. She will turn herself into stone, and Fiona will be able to escape through the third door. Jill used to be a professional dancer. Finally, she fulfilled her dream and opened a dance studio in Chicago. Her business gained popularity in the neighborhood very quickly. But one weekend, someone robbed the studio. The criminal took all the money and broke the mirrors. Jill called the police and they interrogated four suspects. Dan said that he'd been on a business trip in Seattle. Anna said she spent all weekend at her favorite ski resort preparing for the Winter Olympics. Alex was spending time with his dog at home. And Nina was taking care of her sick boyfriend all night. Who's lying? Anna, look at the street. It's summertime. How would she train at the ski resort? Rachel and Mike went on a date. They saw this weird restaurant and decided to check it out. The cook offered them chicken salad, mushroom soup, fish, pasta, and tacos. Can you help the guys choose the safest option? Can you see the broken glass in the salad? Probably not the healthiest option. This fish is still alive. There are worms inside this pasta. As for the soup, it contains little bugs. So, Rachel and Mike should choose the tacos. Emma wants to be a singer, so she started going to the city's most popular and expensive art school. But now, she needs to get some work to pay the bills. Emma found these three job advertisements. Brad needs a manager in his coffee shop. Sophie needs a hostess for her karaoke club on the seventh floor of the local business center. And Lisa offers a part-time job in her model agency. But first, Emma must pay $500 for a four-week training. Only one of these jobs isn't fake. Can you guess which one?
There's no seventh floor in this building. Look at Lisa's picture. Someone scrawled the word scammer on her car. So Emma should choose Brad. Nancy took her son Peter to the bank to discuss his college grant. As soon as they entered the hall, Nancy pointed at these three managers and yelled, It's your father! The first manager said, Miss, I've just moved from another state. I've never seen you before. The second person said, I can't be his father because I'm a woman. And the third manager said, I think we went to the same college, but I've never even talked to you. Can you spot who the real father is? The first guy, look at his face. He has the same eye color as Peter. Jane bought her morning coffee and headed to her office, but she suddenly realized she'd left her wallet at the checkout. She ran back to the coffee shop, but the wallet was gone. Jane saw three people standing nearby and told them, I forgot my wallet here. Have you seen it? Nick, the barista, said, Sorry, I didn't see any wallets. I was focused on the drinks. Danny, the owner, said, Lady, I'm a millionaire. I don't need to steal wallets. Kelly, the customer, said, I think I saw someone suspicious. He was holding a pink wallet. It looked exactly like yours. Can you guess which person is a thief? Kelly. Jane didn't mention the color. Tim came for a family dinner to meet the parents of his girlfriend, Hillary. He entered an empty living room and saw a big table with several chairs. Hillary offered him to take a seat. Can you guess which chair Tim should choose? There's a mug near this chair that says, World's Best Dad. So this chair belongs to Hillary's father. This chair is missing one leg. It will be embarrassing to fall in front of everybody. Someone left a red jacket on this chair. Hillary's wearing a red skirt, therefore, it's her chair. Someone put a prank pillow on this chair, so let's rule that option out. There's only one chair to choose from. It looks pretty safe. Bill got a job in the circus. He was walking down the street after his first day and noticed that he'd forgotten his phone at work. Bill went back and heard weird noises from the dressing room. So he went to check and met three clowns. Bill realized that one of them was an imposter right away. Can you spot him too? Look closer. The second clown is wearing a police badge. He must be working undercover. Larry is a college professor. He gives his worst student, Mike, a task to write an essay within a week. Seven days later, Mike sends Larry a message begging him to postpone the deadline for three days. Larry agrees. Three days later, Larry claims the essay. But now, Mike asks for a five-day delay. Larry is very kind, so this time, he agrees too. Five days later, Mike shows Larry a burning candle and says, Sir, can you please postpone the deadline till this candlewick burns out? Larry laughs and agrees. Mike laughs too, because now he can forget about submitting the essay. Why? Mike blew out the candle. He said, till this candle wick burns out, not till this flame burns out. So now, Mike can keep his candle unburned forever and never submit his essay. Larry brings three boxes of cupcakes to the college kitchen. He leaves them on the table to celebrate his birthday with co-workers after classes. All boxes have different sizes, but each contains three cupcakes. Mm. Meanwhile, Mike enters the kitchen. He opens one box and eats three cupcakes. After classes, Larry finds out that every box in the kitchen still has three cupcakes. Oh. How is that possible? Mike ate cupcakes from the largest box, and then he put a smaller box into the empty box. 
So when Larry opened the remaining two boxes, each of them still had three cupcakes. After classes, Mike invites Wendy on a date. Hello. Since they're both broke, they decided to take a bus ride and then walk back. The bus speed is 9 miles per hour. And the guy's walking speed is 3 miles per hour. What's the maximum distance they could ride on the bus if they must come back in 8 hours? Mike and Wendy can move on a bus three times as fast as they can walk. Therefore, they should spend three quarters of their time walking and only one quarter on a bus ride. So to fit into the eight hour limit, they should ride for two hours going 18 miles and then walk back in six hours. Mike and Wendy are walking down the street and notice one very curious thing. It has three eyes and all are in a straight line. When its red eye opens, everything freezes. Can you guess what they see? A stoplight. Mike returns to the student dormitory to find out his entire food supply is gone. He questioned three people. Can you guess who ate his food? The guy on the right. He has crumbs on his mustache. Mike goes to the library to study archival newspapers. This newspaper is supposed to have 60 pages, but pages 24 and 41 are missing. Can you guess which other pages won't be there too? Pages 19, 20, 23, 37, 38, and 42 will also be missing. Mike finds a note inside the newspaper. There's a secret maze in the library, leading to amazing treasures. The note shows this map. Can you help Mike walk this path correctly? Here's the right way. Mike walks through the maze and finds this bookcase. One of the shelves is fake. Can you spot which one? This shelf is fake. Books on the other shelves are covered with dust and cobwebs. But these books are clean and the cobwebs around them are torn. Mike finds a secret room behind the fake bookshelf. He enters the room and finds a big safe and this weird note nearby. The safe is locked and Mike needs to enter a 9-letter password to open it. Can you help him crack the code? The correct password is Moonlight, and here's why. Take a look at the hint note. All Mike needs to do is to use the corresponding number letter of each word. The first letter in the maze is M. The third letter in looks is O. And the second letter in roses is also O. And so on. Mike opens the safe and finds three identical gemstones and a note. Oh. Suddenly, the door to the secret room slams shut and the walls begin to shrink. Mike reads the note. Only one of these diamonds is real. Find it and put it into the lock. You only have 15 seconds. Good luck. Oh, no. Can you help Mike spot the fake diamonds? Mike should drop all three stones into this glass of water on the table. If the diamond is real, it will drop to the bottom of the glass thanks to its high density. And if it's a fake, it will float on the surface. Mike succeeds and unlocks the door leading to a secret hallway. He walks through the hallway and sees four doors and a beautiful statue in the middle of the space. The statue sings, We came out at night without being called. We disappeared by morning without being stolen. Who are we? Can you guess which door Mike should enter? The song has a hint for Mike. The statue is singing about stars. 
Therefore, Mike should choose the door decorated with stars. Mike enters the next room and meets a queen. She says, Hello, stranger. I have a task for you. If you succeed, I'm going to reward you with wealth and fame. But if you fail, you'll stay here forever as my prisoner. I want to renovate my kingdom so that all my ten castles are connected through five straight walls. And each wall must connect four castles together. Also, at least one of the castles should be protected with walls. Then, the queen shows him this picture and continues, My royal architect failed to give any solution that meets all my wishes, but he suggested this plan. Do you have a better idea? Mike should offer this solution to please the queen. Now two castles are protected with walls. The queen kept her word and made Mike very rich. Also, she threw a feast in his honor. Unfortunately, not all royal servants are glad to see their queen with a new favorite. Take a look at these three people. Can you spot Mike's hater? Although this friendly-looking lord gives Mike a bag of gold coins, there's a snake hiding inside his gift. Mike is observing the royal garden. He sees three lemon trees. Each of them has exactly ten lemons. The gardener comes over and picks four oranges from each tree. Can you calculate the number of fruits left on the lemon trees? Thirty. Oranges don't grow on lemon trees. The queen tells Mike an amazing story. I'm fond of dragon racing. On Sunday, I rode to see a race in a cozy village outside of my kingdom. Five days later, on Monday, I went home. Can you explain this, considering that she doesn't have a time machine? Sunday is the name of her dragon. Mike likes the kingdom very much, but it's time to go home. The queen gives him 3,000 gemstones the size of a watermelon. He rents a truck to carry them home. Mike's current location is 1,000 miles away from home. Unfortunately, the truck can only carry 1,000 gemstones at once. Also, there's a check post on every mile till home. Each post requires all drivers to pay with one gemstone while traveling towards Mike's hometown. But the road is free of charge while traveling towards the kingdom. Can you figure out a way to bring the highest possible number of gems to Mike's hometown? Mike should make three trips of 1,000 gemstones each till mile 333. After that, he will be left with 2,001 gemstones and have 667 more miles to go. At this point, he should take two trips of 1,000 gemstones, covering 500 miles more. This way, he will be left with 1,000 gemstones. After riding the remaining 167 miles, Mike will be left with 833 gems. And he'll still be rich and fabulous. As a child, Laura adored rabbits. She grew up, became a private detective, and got herself a cute rabbit named Cinnabon. Once, she had to go on a business trip. She asked Sarah, her housekeeper, Annabelle, her cook, and Phoebe, her sister, to look after the animal. But when Laura came back, Cinnabon was gone, and all three women she had asked to look after her pet claimed they didn't know what had happened. Look at them attentively. Who is lying? It's the cook. See, it's Cinnabon's collar in her pocket. Well, Laura noticed that too. When Annabelle realized she had given herself away, she broke into a run. Laura dashed after her, but she couldn't catch up with the woman. Luckily, the girl noticed Annabelle run into a gym. She ran inside too. A security guard stopped her. Apparently, all members of this exclusive sport club were supposed to know a special passphrase to enter the facility. Laura was lucky to notice a note with a hint next to the door. Can you help Laura figure out the passphrase?
That's for once in my life. And it was the correct answer, the guard let Laura through. The girl searched everywhere, but didn't find Annabelle. But wait, the showers! When she entered the bathroom, she realized there were three people taking a shower there. But a moment later, she noticed that one person only pretended to be cleaning themselves. Who was it? It's the person in the second cubicle. The water is running, but there's no foam. They don't use any soap or sponge. But, surprise, surprise, the person who pretended to be taking a shower wasn't Annabelle. Then where could the cook hide? Suddenly, Laura noticed a white sheet of paper on the floor. She picked it up. It said, Follow the white rabbit. Look around the room attentively and try to figure out where the girl should go. See those bunny ears on that door? Laura should probably try it. But there was a combination lock on the door. And is that a riddle next to it? Laura started reading. The code is a three-digit number. 682. One number here is correct and well-placed. 635. One number is correct but in the wrong place. 206. Two numbers are correct but in the wrong place. 738. Eight. Nothing here is correct. Seven, eight, zero. One number is correct, but in the wrong place. Can you help Laura figure out the code? From statements four and five, we can understand that zero is the correct number standing in the wrong place. Six can't be the number we need. Otherwise, statements 1 and 2 would contradict each other. In this case, looking at statements 2 and 3, we can conclude that the correct numbers are 2, 5, and 0, and the code is 052. Laura opened the door and saw a long corridor. It led her to a large room. There, she saw a man dressed in black. He was sitting on a throne-like chair, holding Cinnabon. Well, 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 here you are. He said, If you want to get your rabbit back, you'll have to do something for me. Laura had no choice but to agree. You see, my wife Louisa disappeared during a performance she attended a week ago. Your task will be to find her. And the man gave Laura all the details. The girl questioned three witnesses. Dorothy said she had gone home right after the performance and hadn't noticed anything weird. Alina said that she had seen Louisa leave during the break with a tall, blonde man. And Anna said that she'd been on the phone with her husband and hadn't seen where Louisa had gone. Who knows something about Louisa's whereabouts? Alina, look, during the intermission, she wasn't wearing her glasses. Neither did she have her lenses on. Look at how clumsily she moved. But then, how could she see Louisa leaving with a man? After Laura pressed Alina, the woman cracked. She admitted that she had seen some woman pulling Louisa away, but she was afraid to tell the truth since the woman seemed extremely unfriendly. Alina gave Laura a piece of paper the woman had dropped, but whatever was written there, it was a cipher. Can you help Laura crack it? The note says, at the docks. When Laura got there, she saw three buildings. She understood she wouldn't have enough time to search all of them. She needed to choose the one where Louisa was kept, and fast. Can you help Laura? Look at the dark blue construction attentively. Next to the window, there's the word HELP scratched with some sharp object. After looking around the building, Laura found three keys. She needed to figure out which one of them fit the lock. Hurry up! Right, this is the key! The door opened, and Laura saw a woman sitting in the far corner, 
It was Louisa. She helped the woman to her feet, and they stumbled away. Soon, they noticed three taxis. Which car should they choose? The first one doesn't have a license plate. That's suspicious. And the driver of the second taxi is the very woman who took Louisa away a week ago. She's wearing a fake mustache and a baseball cap, pretending to be a man. Laura and Louisa should choose the third taxi. But luck wasn't on their side that evening. The car broke down before they could get to Louisa's husband. They had to walk. There were three paths in front of them. One led to a swamp. Toxic gases were floating all over the surface of the water. The second road was filled with poisonous plants. And over the third path, the air was swarming with agitated wasps. Which path should Laura and Louisa opt for? The second. At least the plants can't move. So if the women are careful, they'll be able to avoid touching them. Finally, they arrived at Louisa's house. Once the man in black saw his wife, he hugged her and turned to Laura. I'm so sorry for using such methods, but I was getting desperate. I can't tell you why, but I had to keep her disappearance under wraps. That's why I chose to involve you. Thank you. I want to give something to you, but to get it, you'll need to crack this riddle. An electronics store owner came to work one day and saw that his safe was open. His money was nowhere to be found. He called the police. When a detective arrived, the store owner explained that the key to his safe was on the same keychain as the keys from his truck. Two of his employees, Andrew and Ryan, used the truck and had access to all the keys, but the men had always returned them. The detective questioned the drivers. Someone broke into your boss's safe yesterday. What do you know about this incident? Andrew said, I didn't copy the key. I wouldn't even know which one to copy. And Ryan said, I've been working here for three months and have never entered the boss's office yet. The detective understood who the thief was right away. Can you figure it out? Andrew stole the money. The detective didn't say how the criminal had opened the safe. Then how did Andrew know it? Laura got the answer right. The man handed her Cinnabon and a brand new smartphone but it was protected by a password. When Laura tried to unlock the phone, that's what she saw. Write backward all the numbers. That sounded like a tough task. Luckily, Laura was very smart. She didn't need much time to write the correct answer and unblock the gadget. So what was the password? S-R-E-B-M-U-N E-H-T-L-L-A. That's all the numbers written backwards. She couldn't believe her eyes. She'd been dreaming of this all her life. But to get it, she'd have to set off on a very unusual journey. Let's dive right in, shall we? Jane, Emma, and Carla are working out in a gym. One of them isn't being careful enough. Who is it? It's Carla. Look, she's doing exercises while chewing gum. She could accidentally choke on it. Look at Matt and Olivia. They're both cooking dinner. Matt is using a stove, and Olivia is using a grill outside. Which of them is doing something wrong? It's Matt. He forgot to turn the stove on. Nor was a married man, and his wife had a twin sister. One day, the twins decided to trick him. They both pretended to be his wife to see if he'd find the right person. Unfortunately, Nor got way too confused. Can you find his real wife? Look at the wedding picture of Nor and his wife. She has a tattoo on her right arm, so his wife must be the woman on the left 
who also has a tattoo on her right arm. Willem and Sean were caught by the police close to the graffiti that had just appeared on a building. One of them painted it, but both denied doing anything. Who do you think is lying? It was Willem. Look, there's some paint on her hands and shirt. Drake and Thor are both on vacation. Drake is skiing in the mountains with his girlfriend, and Thor is surfing with his best friend. Look at them now. Which one of them is in danger? Drake! He's screaming in the mountains. It's not safe because it can cause an avalanche. Now, let's find some pet owners. For example, look at these three girls. Can you figure out who the cat belongs to? Its owner is the girl on the right. Look at her legs and hands. She has some scratches. Very typical for cat owners. Now, there are three people sitting in the park. See that dog playing there? Who does it belong to? To the guy in the middle. Look, he has a leash. These guys, Ian, Noah, and Luke, are basketball players. They're getting ready for the game in the changing room. Which of them is Noah? It must be this guy, the one who's not wearing shoes. Look, his shoes are in the locker with the name tag Noah. Esme was walking in the forest and got lost. She had been wandering for hours until she came across a witch's house. The witch was busy with a new spell and had a riddle for Esme. If the girl managed to solve it, the witch would let her go. If Esme failed, she'd have to stay with the witch forever. So the witch had six test tubes. The first three were empty, and the last three were full. For the spell, full and empty tubes had to alternate. Esme had to solve this problem, but she could only touch one tube. How can she do it? Esme should take the fifth tube and pour the liquid from it into the second one. A bank was robbed on a Friday evening. There were no customers and no signs of a break-in, which meant it was one of the bank employees. The robbery was discovered by the bank director, Mr. Perry. There were three main suspects, Ms. Cott, Mr. Mendez, and Ms. Morgan. All of them denied being anywhere close to the safe. But one of them lied. Who was it? Pay attention to the footprints. These must belong to Mr. Perry. But there's another pair, which must be heels. Mr. Mendez is wearing sneakers, and Miss Morgan is wearing flats. Miss Cott is the only one wearing heels. The footprints are likely to be hers. So she lied. Mrs. Nichols has four daughters and a son. The oldest daughter's name is April. She's an artist. The second daughter is December. She's into sports. Her third daughter is August, and she's keen on cooking. May is the fourth one, and she likes reading. Their brother Adam is the youngest in the family. How is his name connected to his sister's? The first letters of the girls' names make up the name Adam. Another family riddle for you. Ava is Bella's sister, Bella is Ella's sister, and Ella is Ruby's mother. Who is Ruby for Ava? If Ava is Bella's sister and Bella is Ella's sister, it seems like the three of them are sisters. 
Since Ruby is Ella's daughter, then both Ava and Bella are Ruby's aunts. So Ruby is Ava's niece. Take a look at these friends at the beach. Which of them is a robot? It must be this girl. Look, it's very hot outside and everyone is sweating, except her. That's kind of odd. The police also broke into three apartments. In one of them, a robot lives. Can you guess where? Look, there's a lot of machine oil in the bathroom. I'll bet it belongs to the robot. What about this photo? Can you spot a robot here? It's summer, and everyone is wearing shorts and tops. Except for this guy. He's wearing long pants, a long sleeve shirt, and even gloves. He must be hiding his body. I'd say it's him. Here's a photo of people sitting in a cafe. Can you spot a robot here? It must be this lady, since she's not drinking or eating anything. Guess why? Well, robots can't eat human food, obviously. Another peek into some people's houses. One room belongs to a robot, but which one? It must be this one. Look, there's a whole bunch of bolts and spare parts in the wardrobe. Have a look at this group of friends. Can you tell which of them is a robot? It must be this guy. There's some steam and sparks coming from it. Perhaps it's a robot that needs some renovations. Aiko has won a game show, and she can finally get her prize. But there's a catch. One last task. There are three boxes, and she can pick one to take with her. One box is filled with $100 bills. Another box contains 5-cent coins. And the last box has both bills and coins. The boxes look exactly the same, and the girl can't touch any of them. The boxes have labels. Bills on the left one, coins in the middle one, and bills and coins on the right one. All the boxes are labeled wrong. Aiko can't look inside any of the boxes, but she can ask for one sample from any box. What should Aiko's strategy be to identify the box filled with bills only? Since all the boxes are labeled wrong, Aiko should ask for a sample from the bills and coins box. If there's a bill there, then that's the one she needs. She should simply take it. If there's a coin, then it's the box with coins. In that case, the remaining boxes contain bills and bills with coins. And since the labels are incorrect, the one with bills is the one marked with the label coins. The day that is tomorrow for the day after tomorrow is as far away from Wednesday as the day that is yesterday for the day before yesterday. So, what day is it today? The tomorrow for the day after tomorrow and the yesterday for the day before yesterday are exactly three days away from today. If they're equally far away from Wednesday, then today is Wednesday. Meadow loved animals and she decided to get some frogs. She talked to her mom about it, and they made a decision. Only one of these three statements is correct. 1. Meadow got at least one frog. 2. Meadow got at least five frogs. 3. Meadow got fewer than five frogs. How many frogs did Meadow get? So, only one statement is correct. If it's the first one, 
then the other two must be wrong. In this case, she can't get five or more frogs, so it doesn't work. If the second statement is correct, then she has at least five frogs. But then the first statement is automatically correct, too. Let's say the third statement is correct, so she got fewer than five frogs. Automatically, the second statement is wrong. But for the first statement to be wrong, too, she should have got fewer than one frog. So it seems that, after talking to her mom, Meadow got zero frogs. Maybe instead, her mom got her a dog, which would at least rhyme.